Well, good morning to all of you. What a wonderful day it is to be alive. Thank you for joining our service. We're the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. We're located in Fairfield at 401 52nd Street. And it's amazing that you have gotten up this morning and come to worship with us virtually. We're just glad to see you. And whatever God has in store for you, don't miss it. He's going to do a big time blessing for you. So again, as we prepare for our worship service today, for this is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know why I'm so happy? Because everybody ought to know, know who Jesus is. Come on, let's praise with our praise team. Everybody ought to know. <laughs> Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, know who Jesus is, but everybody don't know, everybody don't know, everybody
everybody don't know everybody everybody don't know everybody everybody don't know everybody everybody don't know everybody everybody don't know everybody everybody don't know Here's a question. Do you know him? Well, he can be known. And uh, one part of that song says, um, there's a whole lot of folks that don't know. Uh, but you can know today. And those who don't know who Jesus is, he's God's only begotten son who came down for the two generations and hung on a cross for our sins. The Bible says as he was lifted high and stretched out wide, he dropped low and he died. And he snatched the keys of death and hell. And the scripture says the third day morning he arose with all power, heaven and earth in his hands. And so if you don't know him, you need to know him today. That's a whole lot of stuff that you want to know, but you need to know Jesus. Amen. And thank God for our music ministry and thank God for uh, those uh, praise team folks who always, um, they don't get a paycheck, they, they always, but they're, they're taking time out of the busy schedules and, and putting together music uh, at a distance and we're still in a virtual way. And, uh, and I just want to give high five to them because uh, they don't have to do this, but that's a testament of who, uh, that they know the Lord Jesus Christ. And my God, when we all get to that position, Oh, man, we can turn this world upside down. So, again, I want to thank our uh, music ministry, uh, especially those of the praise team for doing what you do. We don't leave out anybody, but, um, you know, some folks get paid a paycheck, but uh, some don't get anything, and that really speaks volumes. So, again, thank you all so much. A scripture reading that I want to call your attention to is one I'm going to preach for from today. It is in the book of Matthew called the Gospel of Matthew. It's at the fifth chapter. And I want to grab a few verses, verses 13 through 16. Jesus is speaking. He's in the Olivet, or well, really in the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, he's, he's trying to get people excited. We're on that kingdom uh, kick. We've been talking about the kingdom of God. A few weeks ago, we talked about the kingdom of God, thou kingdom come. And uh, we know that it's not physically on the earth, but God is still working it out. And then Father's Day was last week, and we talking about uh, kingdom fathers leaving a legacy behind, that is. And we're, we're dealing with that kingdom thing. God got me all tied up and tangled up in there. And uh, whenever he releases me from it, that's when I will move to something else. But I'm thankful for that. And the world needs to know uh, who Jesus is. And we are his agents to take it out. I'm going to grab those verses and talk and reading from uh, the King James Version. You'll find these words. Uh, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. 
Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. <laughs> and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Concluding verse, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. God has already blessed us and he's continuously blessing us and thank God for uh, his written word and uh, thank God for you who take that word and encapsulate it in your heart. Will you join me uh, this morning as we prepare to approach the throne of grace? And it's amazing that that prayer wheel is turning. And thank God for the mediator, Jesus Christ, who's sitting on the right-hand side of Father God. Now he's, he's praying for us. And prayer is a two-way kind of communication. It is us talking, and then it's us listening from him who is speaking to our hearts. So let us pray today. No matter what state you're in, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you can talk to him. You can tell him all about your troubles, and, and he'll make everything better. I declare to you I'm a living witness. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, as we come before you with thanksgiving and praise, adoration, with appreciative spirits. Father, we thank you for who you are. So oftentimes, Lord, we come to you with a grocery list of things that we want and a lot of times we miss those things that we really need but we come this morning lord with one intention in mind and that is to hallelujah your name to honor you you are from everlasting to everlasting you are our savior you are our king even in these hellacious times in which we tried, you are the beginning and the end. You are our way maker. You watched over us all last night and while we were sleeping, slumbering, unconscious, you dispatched angels around our dwelling place. And very early this morning, you touched us with that gentle touch that finger of love and you awaken us to another day a day that we've not seen before and we'll never see it again the only thing that we're deserving of and that is death but thanks be to you O oh God for your love for us that while we were yet dead in our trespasses and sin you sent your only begotten son into the world to pay the penalty for the sins of the world. And Lord, we are included in that today, that we rest in your presence and we give you glory for your sacrifice. Thank you, God, that we know you. And we pray now, Lord, on behalf of those who don't know you. And we ask God that you would kindly draw them to your side. Lord, use us. We are your church. We are ambassadors. We represent heaven down here on earth. God, teach us to walk in the way that would be pleasing to you, that someone would see you in us and would be drawn to you. Father, help us to know that we're living in the last days. God, help us to be concentrating on the things that are really worth concentrating on, and that is presenting kingdom values and standards into this sin-sick world. We pray, Lord, now for those who have struggled trying to walk righteously before men have been amputated in their positions. But, Lord, we ask that you would be merciful unto them. Help those, Lord, that are struggling this morning. We pray now, Lord, for our church. We pray, God, for directions. And we pray, God, for your presence among us. We thank you, Lord, for those saints who have gone on. Last week we had to put in the ground a body, two bodies, that of Sister Sanders and then Sister Addie McCall. But we ask God now your blessings upon their family. There's been a void left in our family here, the church family. But God, we know that you'll be a mother for the motherless, a father for the fatherless. 
God, I thank you that you are always with us. Never, ever would you leave us. And we pray now, Lord, for this dying world. We pray, God, that you would have your way with it. We are like Abraham, God. Give it another chance. And then, Father God, help the church to become mobile. Whatever your will is for us, God, not our will, let thine will be done. To you, O oh God, be the glory, majesty forever and forever. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. This morning, we love you, Lord. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. God bless your heart. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow down before him. He's the only true wise God, our Father. It is in him that we move and we have our being. As a result, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. For the preparation song that we have on store for to give God glory is real so powerful that they're talking about not only everybody need to know Jesus, but then you, he is the living word. He is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Come on, y'all. Let's, let's praise with our music ministry, uh, the living word. <laughs>
He's the living word, not a dead word, living word. I want to call your attention back to our scripture lesson this morning in Matthew's gospel and uh, in the fifth chapter. And I want to just raise two verses here just to kind of get us back and to con keep the continuity. In verse 13 and 14, you'll find these words again. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savior, savor, Wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this privileged time. Show up with your holy boldness and have your way with us. To that end, God, we will leave not only salty Christians, but light-bearing Christians. Have your way with us for this period of time as we come together with you. We sit at your feet now. Have your way. You are our potter. We are the clay. Mold us now and shape us, Lord. To that end, God, we will glorify your name forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray together with me. Amen. Amen. One more time. Amen. One for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I used to hear that all the time. Amen. I greet our preachers that are at a distance and our officers as well, and then to our members. God bless your heart, sweet ones, precious ones. To you, God has given an opportunity to today to come before him. And as we come this morning, we come seeking his presence, his face, his wisdom, and his directions. And today I want to talk to you from a subject that is needful today. Somebody says, you say that every week, I do. And it is needful. Everything in this Bible is needful. We'll talk to you from this subject, the kingdom impact upon the world. The kingdom impact upon the world. Once again, the kingdom impact upon the world. When we look at this text today, it gives us in the first part of chapter five, Jesus is dealing with his disciples. He's dealing with those apostles that he is expecting to carry on um, the precepts and the principles uh, when he is off the scene. Jesus is dealing with the, the, on the Mount of Olives where he is uh, preaching and he's talking about the, the compaction and the cataclysmic, uh, not union, but intersecting of heaven and that of earth. He is busy trying to get his, those, those disciples those, those who have been called out to, to be heritors of the good news, but also to exemplify what's happening in heaven on earth. He's trying to get them to understand. In fact, he is speaking to them at the point of the text, but this morning he's also speaking to you and I. What is our responsibility as, as we are kingdom men and women and children? Are we just to just kind of hang out or just to be around or just to exist? No, God has a great mandate for us. And that mandate is for us to be ambassadors, uh, ambassadors of heaven on earth. We know about the earthly ambassadors. There are ambassadors of American ambassadors that are over in other foreign countries and what they are there for to relate and to restrict and to carry the standards of America into a foreign place. Well, Jesus has come to set us 
free, the captives he, we were, and he set us free so that we can become ambassadors of heaven on this treacherous and tedious ground called planet Earth. There was a movie that came out. I'm kind of like a movie buff. I like to kind of watch uh, some movies. I, you know, I like the ones that make you cry, and I like the ones that kind of make you kind of, you know, scream. And uh, I like all kinds of movies. And that was one particularly that I thought about when I was asking God how to deal and how to traverse through this text. That movie called The Deep Impact. Y'all remember that? Around 1998, the pilot summary of this was this, and I, and I say, a teenager astronomer and his teacher discover an object among the stars at night. Little do they know that it's a comet on a direct collision course with planet Earth. And after the teacher dies in a car crash trying to report his findings to the president and announce the comet's existence, he also states that there is no need to panic because, this is the president, he says, because NASA is going to send astronauts on the space mission. That mission is called, was then Messiah. Their mission is to destroy the comet before it gets too close to the earth. When Messiah backfired, the president announced that special Caves will have to be built and the government will have to have a lottery of faith to randomly select 800,000 ordinary folk, American citizens to, to have a, to go along with 200,000 scientists and other officials. When you think about these million, one million people will be set aside was their intention to save the population from extinction when the comet would hit. My brothers and sisters, it may not be, it is not a really a comet uh, in our day and time, but it is a collision course that heaven and earth is on. And that, and, that, and that impact that happened during the 1998 movie called In Sudden Impact is the impact that God wants us to make in another way. We who have been born again, we who have been brought out of darkness, we that First Peter says that we are peculiar people called out of darkness, placed into his marvelous life. We are to become impactful to a world that is out of shape. You will have to admit today that this world is becoming rotten. It's becoming more rotten as every day, every, every week, every, every month, every year goes by. It seems to be coming more rotten. And and God has said something to us that have been born again. And our text, it says, he makes it very personable. He says something to this extent. He said, not y'all, he says, but ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the salt of the earth. When there, back in the olden day, back in the biblical day, back when time began, man would take the meats that they would try to house and there was salt that was placed upon it to keep it from becoming so rotten. And, and that salt had values and its purpose was to preserve and to keep rotten meat before coming, becoming rotten. What, he, what, what God is saying to us as Christians, not that we are better than others, but that we are to become impactful in a way that will preserve and that will take this decaying world that we are in so that the decay can be stopped. Yes, when I say decay, rotten, it is a fact that seemingly men will call that which is good, 
evil and they reverse it and call that which is evil good. Mothers and fathers are separating from one another. Children are disrespecting children. Used to be a time that people would honor God in not only in the church house, but at their houses. Used to be a time that, 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 that the world would, would not sneer and jeer at the presence of righteousness. But you would agree that we are living in a rotten society. When you've seen the things that happen and all the things that are happening as we speak today, our society is decaying. What can we, what can happen that can stop this decay? It is the fact that there must be a collision with heaven and earth, and God has saved us to become impactful in that way. You know what? He says that ye are. He, he, know, he doesn't talk about groups. He says you individually. It's almost that Jesus is pointing that the, those, those particular disciples called the apostles, he is particularly saying to them, no matter what other folks are doing, you, you are the salt of the earth. Notice what he says. He said, you are the salt of the earth and you are to go into a, a world. You are go, to go into a society. You are to go into cultural position and to salt them because they are decaying. They are rotten even to the point of smelling. And that's why Jesus would say to us, God, my father hates sin. He loves the sinner, but he hates sin. The church has been called out. God is trying to get, we are the salt of the earth. Notice, not salt of the church, not salt in the box, but we are the salt of the world. He says the earth in our text, he's talking about the world. Salt, salt preserves and my brothers and sisters, people are so busy. Uh, we're trying to do so many things, and we miss. And Matthew 6.33 said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. The problem is with the church, we are still in the salt shaker, and God has been trying to shake us out of the salt container. And I believe in my spirit. I don't have, a, I'm not the smartest thing, not the shiniest nickel in the barrel, but I believe in my spirit that this pandemic was designed to shake the salt out of its shaker. You know, people get so caught up coming to church and I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very careful. I have to be, because sometimes I'm brutally honest. But I'm sick and tired of folk telling me, I can't, I can't wait to get back to church so that we can socialize and we can hug. Can I tell you, God is shaking us out of the salt shaker. There's too many folk talking about he's a mighty good God at church. I know he's a good God. Oh, a whole lot of time we come to church and we sing songs and we leave and oh, did we have church today? But then we don't let the salt move from the shaker. There's some people outside right around our church in this impoverished area that we live looking for the Savior. They are rotten. They are decaying day by day. Their values have lost out. And God said, ye are the salt of the world. People trying to hurry up and get back to normal. Say, get back. God's pushing us out of the shaker and we're trying to get back in it. Oh, yeah, I love the fellowship and all that. But you know what? God has a reason for allowing anything to happen. Everything that happened throughout the history of time has happened because God allowed it and he had a purpose for allowing it. Let your, your salt out of its shaker. 
And so I want to talk about the position and the, and the possibilities and the meaning of this terminology. You are the light, yeah, and the salt. So let's deal with the salt first because I think it's important if we look at the text. Because when you look at the first part of Matthew 5, he's talking, he's giving them what is the attitude, what are the attitudes of kingdom folks, men and women and children? Where he, he deals, blessed, 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 blessed. He goes through that and he gets up to verse 12 and he talks about the attitude of a Christian, a kingdom person person ought to be those parameters, those principles. And I preach about that hopefully in another sermon. But then he moves over to verse 13 and he goes in and he talks about the impact as us being character people of the kingdom, the impact we ought to be having on the world. And if you told the truth today, not really are we so impactful. When I think about the salt, the salt is a descriptive, is given a descriptive analyzation of it. And what Jesus does here in verse 13, he gives a description to analyze. He's analyzing the salt, the purpose of it. He's, he's telling us that what we are to be called. We are called salt because of, when we analyze it, we are, have been called salt because of this very reason that, I, that we have the preserving abilities to take that which has been become decayed and decaying, we are preserving, we have the preserving abilities. You think about preserving salt, wash off rot and decay. Yes, it does. It is, it is rubbed into the meat with the effort to preserve it. We've seen that many times, even though too much salt can cause your blood pressure to get up there and all that. I understand that. But salt has a medicinal purpose. And it, what it does, it preserves. And when you think about salt for the duration of this sermon, you need to think about Christians becoming salty. We're supposed to be salty, not in a negative spirit and attitude, but we are supposed to have the preserving abilities. God has placed that in us to go in and salt that which is decaying. When we think about Solomon and Gomorrah in chapter 19, the opportunity they could have been saved by the preserving influence of just 10 people. If Lot, Lot was, Lot was a righteous man. Y'all remember Lot? Lot was a righteous man. But Lot didn't let that go down through his family. He was righteous, but then his family did not take on that, that position because Lot allowed his, his, the salt stayed in the shaker. Just think about when Abraham was asking God, Lord, just if you can just find 40, and he went down to 30 and went down, if, if Lot would have allowed the salt to ex, to ex, spoon, expel from the shaker, then his family, that would have been six people and just think about if they would have done something else they would have had 12 and that go your 10 and then this Sodom and Gomorrah could have been saved but they forgot about the preserving abilities of the salt and when you look at it Proverbs the fourth chapter 14 chapter verse 34 says like this righteousness exalted a nation but sin is a reproach to any people Brothers and sisters, it does not mean, listen to me today, it does not mean that we, we, have, we have what I call perfection all in us. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory. But we who have been saved, God has saved us to be preserving that which is decaying around us, and that is this world. We are to be impactful, and what God is doing to the disciples is giving them an opportunity to analyze the salt that they have become. Our preserving abilities, but not only that, we notice that salt gives a penetrating ability. 
So what do you mean by penetrating? Salt will penetrate and infiltrate whatever it touches. It is an aggressive substance. In the early church experience, the salt, they let the salt out of the shaker. Can I tell you, I thank God for worship. I thank God for corporate worship. But when we get through with corporate worship for that period of time, we give the benediction, and the benediction doesn't mean leave the salt in the shaker. It means to go out and shake your shaker wherever you go. Watch that. I said, shake your shaker. <laughs> Notice this. When we think, I believe that we have been called by the Lord to be an active force in the world around us. You may not be able to go into Calcutta, England, India, but you may not be able to go to Africa. You may not go to Switzerland, but you can go where you are, wherever. Make that your little parcel of work and shake your salt. When I think about that, the church should be a military, and when I call militant army, changing the very gates of hell, charging against it. And Matthew, the 16th chapter, verse 18 says like this, the church is not a meager, I'm lazy, scary fight church. No, we are a victorious church. We have been put on the, the battlegrounds of life. We have become salt in a world that needs it. Notice what Matthew says in 18, verse chapter 16. He said, and I said unto thee that thou art Peter, Upon this rock, yeah, I will build my church, Jesus says, and, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What am I saying that our penetrating ability is that God has made us to be salt and the world needs our salt out of the shakeup. And if you're just coming to church, if you're just having Bible study, if you're just having these meetings, whatever, and never, ever let the salt go, this world is going to become even more cataclysmically out of control. Acts the 17th chapter, verse 16 says, and when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. And what, when we, because of our penetrating abilities, as we analyze that position, as God speaks to us about our, our saltiness, we know that it will penetrate. God has determined for us not to sit back and watch all of this idleness go on in this land, but to take a stand, first of all, in prayer. I tell you, there's something that prayer can do that you may not be able to do yourself. There's something about prayer. God gives us his word. We just finished singing to him the living word of God. He is a living word, and, and we have all of the necessity. We just need to let our salt shake. And Jason was one of those believers that, that believed that God, God knew what he was talking about and he trusted God. And just because we have penetrating abilities doesn't mean you're not going to be a cost with issues. All of us got issues and we're going to be persecuted. But when we think about it, God sometimes will allow us to get in some areas so that we can salt that which is decaying. Sometimes God will change your address. He may change your area code. He may, he may change your job. He may change, he may put you in a situation that, that you didn't plan on going because he know that it's decaying. And if you are salt, you shake your salt on him and it can penetrate and be aggressive. And that which was dying can be stayed from death. Can I get a witness? Oh, my brothers and sisters, oh, we sang them songs, I'm going up yonder. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. We sang those songs, but y'all, we got to do more than sing. We got to take these salt shakers and take the, level, take, take the cover off of it and salt the earth. Yeah, the salt of the world. Salt has a penetrating abilities, but not only that, salt has a purifying ability quality. It has a purifying quality or ability. 
Salt has remarkable cleansing ability. Back in the day, Christians had a purifying effect on the world around them. Yeah, people got mad at them. They, they, ought, to, they ought to have diff, behave differently. And we today ought to behave differently. God didn't call us from darkness for us to go in and work darkness. He called us out of darkness so that we can go back in and bring about light. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. The purifying ability, when we think about it, when God walks up, don't be, don't be offended when people stop talking to you, uh, bringing you to their parties. Don't, 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 don't be upset when folks stop doing what they're doing when you show up on the scene. Because when you do that, when you, when you have that penetrating ability, and when you understand your position as salt, salt is not to go in and mingle and become what it needs to destroy. Fix that, Reverend. God didn't tell us to go in and become something else. He told us to be salt wherever we are. <laughs> That's where, when you, wherever you are, bowling, wherever you are, pleasurable things, wherever you are, you are to be salt, not to blend in. Thank God that you are acting as a purifying force in the world around you. My question to you, are you really? Do people see Jesus in you? Have your salt been locked up so long that folks don't respect you as a Christian because your salt done lost its saltiness. When I think about it, Romans 12 and 1 through 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, living, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. You better hear me. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. My brothers and sisters, when I think about our purifying ability, you know, we, we can't change folk, but we can show up, put some salt on them. <laughs> I used to come out sometimes and when I was living in, in Woodlawn, and, uh, and, and they used to be snails. Yes, some people call them slugs, you know, whatever you want to call them, I call them snails. Snails used to be on the front porch, and mom and them used to always go in and get some salt. I mean, they go get salt, and I see my mama pouring, pouring that salt on the snail. Sometimes it was a bunch of them. It was a snail family. <laughs> and come back a few moments later, and the slug has dissolved. I don't know what the properties of a snake, a snail, a snook, a, what I said, a slug. I don't know. I don't know what. The, I don't know what they're good for. But I know what salt to do. Salt to get rid of that which is not pure. Yeah, some folk can't eat food without salt. They got to put that salt on there. It's something about salt. You just put salt, 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 salt do some, some thing that, or water down folks and put heat on some beans and you know what? Some people can't cook and they, they don't put no additives in there. But they come, you, first thing you do, they just get to put the salt on there. Salt, salt can get rid of some, that which is impure. Snails and slugs. Now God didn't want us to be salty killers, but he wants us to be salty purifiers. You ought to change your position, and you ought to change your environment where you are. Remember last week, I got a little bit trying, trying to tell us that God didn't call us to be thermostats, always talking about, oh, it's dark, always talking about, oh, it's hot. No, God called us to be thermostats. As purifiers, we are, to, we are to gauge this world and we are to impactfully hit this world in a way with love and change what's going on. I believe in my spirit. 
If every born again believer that has been baptized in the fire of Almighty God, that has been set free from their sin, ought to be salted so much that wherever we go, we should make a difference. And that difference should be impactful in a powerful, positive way. Can I get a witness here? I think sometimes we think that we're just going to sing the song, wait for our charity to come down and get us. God gave us some working orders. And when I think about our abilities as salt, that we also, we think about where we are and where we've been, the purifying abilities, but also our pleasing abilities. Now, you got to hear me when I say that, and I got to explain this kind of deeply. It brings out, we ought to bring out the best. Yeah, salt. Salt brings out the best. Salt blends and adds flavor to the food. In fact, there are some foods that are better off not eating if there is no salt. To, so, too, the Christian should flavor the world around it as salt does for food. We ought to be to people. We are to so live our lives, preach reverend, that, our bring, that we bring out the best of those that are around us. That is what Jesus did, my brothers and sisters, time and time again, and that, that what you and I are supposed to be doing, supposed to be doing for his glory. Philippians, the first chapter, verse 27 says, this, are you still with me? Have you become even more salted? <laughs> Notice what it says there in verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Whether I go, come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. We ought to be, it, our, our abilities of salt ought to be pleasing, ought to bring out the best. And people, yes, we can look at that, that ridicule them because we've been ridiculed. We can talk about them. But you know what? Everybody got something good about them. Sometimes just to get in the door, you need to accentuate the positive rather than the negative at the beginning. Always if God cracks the door, you ought to make things better. When you show up on your job, you ought to make things better. When you show up at your club meeting as a result of being salty, you ought to make things better. They ought to be like this here. Oh, Willie has shown up. I think it's going to be all right. Or do, is, is it the opposite? Oh, here come Willie, y'all. Break out some more bottles. No, God has called us to be different. Not perfect, but different. He's perfecting us. He's working on us. But we ought to not go into the world. Wherever we go, club meeting, whatever it is, your position, your job, your pleasurable moments, wherever we go, we should still and remain to be salty. You know, one day I bought some peanuts, and the uh, doctor told me that I had a little pressure, spiking, a little blood pressure spiking and stuff, and and I, I love them peanuts with the salt on, but I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in there, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to wash all this salt off, salt off these peanuts. Can I tell you, that was a miserable taste in peanuts and watered down peanuts and no salt on the peanuts. What God tells us to do is salt with what I call with some wisdom sense. Just eat enough. Sometimes people can't take all the salt that we have, but we need to do it in stages. The key of the matter is that we ought to be salt that does one thing and be pleasing. Do people look at you when you come and do you bring the best out of them or do you bring the worst out of them? And my brothers and sisters, when we think about the abilities of salt, Yes, it is our pleasing moments, but it also is our, it's a poisoning ability. You got to hear me too on this, poisoning. Salt kills some things, and ever pulled salt on a slug, ever put salt, ever put salt in an in a engine, ever, ever put salt on your lawn, your grass, it can kill things. Too much salt is not good for your high, your blood pressure, 
And judges tell us about that salt can, if it's not used right. And what, what do you mean, preacher? Can I, let me say something. Listen to me, listen to me. Listen, are you listening? Say amen. You become a holy roller is not what God called you and I to be. God didn't call us to be judgmental. God called us to be salt. And if you're always beating folks up and never, never talking about the love of God. Listen, we can point. Listen, we don't have to find and look for people's fault. They got them. They always are. Ours are visible. But I guarantee you, Jesus didn't come talking about how bad they were. He came seeking those who were lost. And the scripture says he went to Calvary's cross because of those precious ones who were sinners, yes, but he loved them so much that he gave his life for them. Brothers and sisters, we need to quit fighting one another and killing those that are already decaying. We just need to be salt. When I think about the properties here that we have, the poisoning ability, the ninth chapter of Judges, verse 45 says, and Abimelech fought against the city all that day. And he took the city and slew the people that was therein and beat down the city and sold it with salt. He put too much salt. It, it couldn't, he put it all over their farmland and it killed everything. Now, listen, God's salt is not designed to kill. God's salt is designed to change. We can make an impact on our world. And very fact that Christianity is pure poison to sin, when Jesus comes into our life, drinking will stop, cussing will stop, fighting will stop, hatred will stop, killing will stop, drugging will stop. I'm here to tell you, loose living will stop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You put to death the shame of Jesus when you've been saved and become unsalted, still living in sin, wallowing in sin, got the shingle of your baptismal, but not walking before people so they can see the good works that you do and glorify God. That's a scripture that I call your attention to in 2 Corinthians tell us about when we think about the, our poisoning ability. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Does that mean that we graduated straight to the top of the class? No, but we shouldn't be in the first grade still. Now, when we got saved, God saved us to change. There ought to always be an exemplary change in our lives. The more we spend time with him, the more we should look like him. The more we pray to him the more we should react like him. The more we stand still in him, the more we should be like him. Can I ask a question today? It's one of those rhetorical questions. You don't have to answer it out loud. Have your salt lost its savor? My brothers and sisters, when I think about our salt, it is a promoting ability. Salt creates a thirst for water and those who are exposed to it. That's why whenever you go to the ball diamond, baseball, you, you know, eating peanuts, they make sure salt on that because they know you're going to come and buy some beer or, you know, maybe soda. The thing about it is salt makes, creates a thirst and that's what we're supposed to do. Are you creating a thirst? And I'm not talking about a thirst for alcohol, drugs, and pleasurable things. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about a thirst for Jesus. You know, over in the book of Psalms, it talks about that we ought to have that desire just as the deer panteth for water, so ought our soul panteth after him. That means having a thirst for him. Folks can't have a thirst for Jesus if you don't thirst for him yourself. 
Man, listen, I know we're away from the church, but you don't have to come to the church building to get that thirst. You spending time with God where you are brings about a thirst that whether you are here in the building or outside of it, you have a thirst and you ought to cause the world around you to thirst for Jesus. Not just Jesus opening the eyes of blind folks and unstopping the deaf ears. He can do that. That's all right. But listen, having a relationship, thirsting for a relationship. Do people want your Jesus? Are you salty enough that, that people want to have what you have? Or have you lost your savor that folks just look at you just as a pastime? No, I, we are salty Christians. And when I think about our position as salt bearers, man, God tells us without a doubt that we ought to be, have a promoting ability a promoting ability that making causing other folks to want your Jesus. In chapter 7 of John, verse 37 and 38 says it to this effect. It says that in the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, shall flow rivers of living water. Are you promoting thirst around your particular world? When we leave here today and when you go somewhere today, masked up, vaccinated, so forth and so on, make sure that you cause people to thirst for Jesus. And that can only happen through you allowing the salt out of the shaker. And I know there are a few more points I need to give you, but when I think about our promoting ability, it makes me think about our proving ability. And it's been already been proven. Salt changed nearly everything it touches. Food, ice, so on and so on. We are called to be thermostats and not thermometers in the world around us. We are to be that instrument that God can use to implement change in a decaying world around us. So that's the description to analyze. And secondly, I want you to look at the danger to avoid. We've seen the description to analyze. Look at the danger to avoid. Salt was very valuable in the ancient world, my brothers and sisters. In fact, that the Roman legions, the soldiers, were paid along with their with physical money, they were also given salt. And they were given salt because they would take the salt home and give it to the wives and the meat that they purchased that could be preserved. Boy, that was amazing when that Roman soldier didn't do the work that they should have done, they didn't get the salt. That's where we come up with the terminology, you ain't worth your salt. I hope that will never be said to any of us as Christian salt bearers that we'll never get to the point that our salt has lost its savor, that people saying he ain't worth, she ain't worth their salt. When I think about the danger to avoid, when, when, when we get so more of the world in us that we've lost our position as salt to saints, we live in the world, but we're not of the world. We have to go to jobs. We, have, we live, we go to places in the world, but that should not become us. We are kingdom men and women. We are supposed to make a difference in a positive way that God's name can be glorified. We are to be salty wherever we go. And I guarantee you, you don't have to put, a, you don't have to put on a show. Just be who God has made you to be, and folks will see him in you, and they, will. they may not like us all, but they have to respect us. And the problem is when salt has lost its saltiness, that's a conundrum. And I think about that word conundrum, that means that it's some type of puzzle that can't be solved. And Jesus used this conundrum, when you look at it in verse, 13, in verse 14, notice what he said, ye are, he says, now, not only you are the salt of the earth, but he says, you are the light of, a word, of the world. When I go back to verse 13, he says, now, for... The salt has lost its savor. Wherewith shall it be salted? Now, when you think about it, can salt really lose its savor? And that's that conundrum that I talk about. But when you think about it is, he, you can never lose what God has placed in you. The problem is you don't release it. It's still there. 
You salt doesn't have an expiration date. Have you checked that out? <laughs> look at go home and look at your look at your salt box. Go to the store. Look at this. It does not really have an expiration date. You know why? Because salt is designed to be salted. The conundrum you can't you can't re really it's impossible for salt not to be salt. So why would Jesus say this? that it has lost its savor. He's saying that you done put the lid on the salt shaker and you can't get it out because you're so much like the world. He's saying that when we start becoming callous and, and our conscience have been seared to the foolishness that's going on that we just think it's just supposed to happen, then we have locked up the salt shaker in my house. My wife got a bunch of them salt shakers all over the place. Some of them been there for a long time. I think we have been in two houses, got those salt shakers. And, you know, I bought a big old lid because we cook together now and all that. And I bought a big old container, uh, not so big, but put the salt in there. And I got a big old top, take the top off. And every time we get ready to cook, we, got it. we, we can pull that lid off and, and put that salt in. What I'm saying to you, the world can cause your salt to not be salty on them because you got it locked up and you trying to be friends with something that God told you not to be. You got to avoid that. You don't want to become stuff that's trodden under the feet. When I think about the danger to avoid, it gives us that ex opportunity to know that we are not of the world Genesis, the 26th chapter, verse 15 and 58, long scripture. I want to, verse 18 says, And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the name by which his father had called them. <coughs> what I just said. Don't let nobody put the top on your salt shaker. God took the top off so that you can shake it on folks. And there'll be some folks don't want to hear nothing about your Jesus, but you can't, you can't do nothing but talk about him. You are not only the salt of the world, but you're the light of the world. The description to analyze and a danger to avoid. And then finally, a destiny to abhor. A destiny to abhor. Every Christian in this place, everyone that's listening to me today should understand that when we lose our saltiness and when we cease to function as salt in the world, then we, are, we too have become good for nothing. While we cannot lose our salvation, we can certainly lose our usefulness in the kingdom of God. When this happened, we have become something to be trodden upon the foot of men and contentment. Paul knew that potential was possible. He knew the propensity for that to happen. In 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse 27, is why he said, Know ye not that that which is run a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. And then that ye may obtain it, verse 24, 25 says, and every man that strive for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but they, but we an incorruptible crown, verse 26. And therefore, so, so run, not as certainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Here it is, but... 27, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, Lord have mercy, I myself should be a castaway, a destiny to abhor. Verse Corinthians, the first chapter, ninth verse, ninth chapter, verse 27 says it in the New Living Translation. I'm going to read it to you so you can get it. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. J.I. Packer writes a book, and he says that I preached to thousands of folks and got them saved and got to the end of my life and discovered I wasn't saved. If it's good for the goose, it ought to be good for the gander. If you let this salt out of the shaker, God will direct it to where it goes. 
and it will cause that which is decaying to stop. Society, this world is rotten. It's decaying because the church got the salt locked up. <laughs> and if we just release the salt, it has a purifying capacity in closing. Bowling. You put, got a ball, fancy ball. Got a bag, fancy bag. <laughs> oh, you got the, you got the, the, the clothing. And <laughs> you got the ball, you're you at the, at the starting line. Put the three fingers in the ball. Cock the ball. Get your line, get your body fixed. I mean, you old oh man, old oh man. Get your stance. Do your approach. And release the ball. Kick your leg out. Oh, man, we Christians, we look good, don't we? But it ain't going to do no impacting if that ball goes in the gutter. Some bowler knows what I'm talking about. Got your garb on. Got your two ball bags, some three ball bag. Got your ball for your spare. Got your ball, your number one ball. You know how to put your fingers in the ball. You know how to get that stance. You know how to t approach it. You know how to kick that leg out. And if it goes in that gutter, it will not have any impact on them pins that still standing. Sadly, a lot of churches, church folks, got the salt locked up. Look good. We had a good time at church. But you're not impacting the world when, when church benediction is given. That was a, they came up with a campaign at Burger King when I was with them so many years ago. Burger King, home of the Whopper. My franchisee had grown to 10 restaurants and I was over those restaurants and that was sometimes the managers would not order the right amount of food and sometimes they would run out of stuff. Got a couple of calls on a Monday after the weekend had gone by and they were talking about a particular restaurant in Birmingham that they said, we went to your restaurant on Friday and there was no, they said they didn't have any Whoppers. You got a sign out there that said Burger King, home of the Whopper. What's your problem? What's your old problem? I had to get down to the brass tacks to find out that the manager didn't order enough meat and didn't have sense enough to call another store to ask the store to buy it. What's the, what's the essence of this story I'm telling you? If you're going to be home of the Whopper, Make sure you got the Whopper there. If you're not, then take the sign down. Bring it to Christianity. And I'm closing. If you wearing the banner of Jesus Christ, if you say I'm a Christian, and you're not practicing salting the earth, then take the sign down. And if you are salted, and you have decided to follow him, no turning back, then salt God will never let you run out of it. He'll always give you a witness. He'll always have your audience. There'll always be a parcel ground. There'll always be a decaying individual around you. Salt them. Yes, he is the rock of ages. Yes, he is a bright and morning star. Yes, he is a middle wheel in the middle of a wheel. He is joy in times of sorrow. Yes, he is a way out of no way. Yes, he is the alpha and omega. But just to say that in him is not good enough. Loose the lid and be salty wherever you go. 
That's the kingdom's responsibility. And we as men and women of God, we are to be salty and not allow anybody else to deter us. Jesus was on a collision course to hit the earth over 2,000 years ago. He came down through 42 generations into a Bethlehem manger on a collision course to make an impact on the world. And he made an impact even to the point that they hung him on a cross, lifted him high and stretched him out wide. Y'all know it. Dropped him low and he died. Y'all know it. He made an impact. Third day morning, they weren't expecting it. He arose with all power, heaven and earth in his hands. He made an impact. And now he sits on the right hand side of Father God and praying for us. Father, it's not my will that you take them out of the world, but let them be salty while they're in the world. And that's one day he's coming back and he will reclaim us. But until he comes, he says, occupy. You know what he's saying is, take your salt shaker and shake it wherever you go. In the hills, in the highway, in the low-lying places, in the good places, in the deep places of life, shake your salt. You are the salt of the earth. Ye are the light of the world. Not to be hidden, not to be put on a bushel, but to let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works, not your good thing. Anybody can do a good thing. What works is that you do for people, not expecting them to give nothing back in return, but loyalty to Almighty God. And God gets the glory. Are you salty today? And if you're not, you haven't accepted Jesus Christ. You accept him today and he will make you a salty saint. Are you a saint, but your salt has stopped flowing? Let him come back to him and stop training yourselves in the world lift the standards of God and be salty where you are and whatever comes your way God will get you through it all he's looking for is a vessel that is willing so that he can take your vessel and shake you out wherever he desires Saints, have your salt lost its savor? Turn to Jesus. And Father, we come to you today, Lord, and we thank you that we have a responsibility, and that is to get the salt out of the shaker and to let our little light so shine before men. Lord, if that person who is preparing to turn their lives over to you. God, would you touch them right now and save them? If you're that individual, maybe you're those individuals, would you say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Save me. I'm sorry for it. I believe that Jesus died and rose that I might have life. Come into my life. And if you pray that prayer today, He'll save you and make you salty. Father, we thank you and we love you. And as we go from place to place, God, don't let our salt shaker become clogged with the things of this world. But Lord, freely allow us to shake where we go that somebody's life will be preserved and somebody's heart will be changed. To that end, we give your name the praise. We ask it all in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless your heart. Catrice Pruitt is going to come. You made that decision. She's going to give you some direction. Whatever the case is, listen to her, and then I'll be back in a few moments. If you pray the sinner's prayer, we welcome you to the body of Christ. It is important that you connect to a Bible-based, Christ-centered church. And if that connection is here at the Grove, we welcome you to our church family. 
Connect with us immediately following this broadcast at 205-786-3351 so that we can gather more information from you and personally welcome you to the Grove. Thank you for your financial support of this ministry through the giving of your tithes and offering. Continue to make your contributions by Cash App, PayPal, U.S. Postal Service, or our drop-off service. Today is the last Sunday in the month of June, which is our uh, Capital Campaign Sunday. We ask each household to contribute $100 to this effort. The scholarship ministry is now taking information to recognize the achievements of our youth for the 2020-21 school year and the class of 2021 graduates. Their accomplishments will be recognized on the fourth Sunday of July. Please send your information and any questions to our First Lady, Sister Carol Wells, at cwells227 at gmail.com. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, and Delta Plus are the variants of the COVID-19 virus. The Delta strand is more dangerous and has been labeled as the fastest and fittest version of the coronavirus that will affect our most vulnerable population, and it's here in Alabama. I hope by now we know who is the most vulnerable population. Dr. Rachel Lee, Assistant Professor of Medicine at UAB says, and I quote, I think it's hard for some people to understand that this has not gone away. Dr. Rachel Lee also stated that in the state of Alabama, vaccine uptake has slowed to a crawl. We encourage you to remain cautious in your daily interactions mask up, lather up, and sleeve off. And by all means, get vaccinated. We are at the close of the second quarter of 2021. We want to say loudly, happy birthday to everyone born in April, May, and June. Take care of your physical, mental, and spiritual health. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing, and in everything, give thanks. Have a safe week, and God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Catrice, for those announcements. And man, y'all, please be governed by them. And there's a whole lot of things she said that I want to reiterate, but let me just say a couple of things. Listen, 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 listen. This, this coronavirus and got some brothers and some sisters, look like triplets going on. And uh, the 4th of July, we, we're coming up on it. And uh, my brothers and sisters, please don't be foolish. Uh, we still got some issues, and because people have not gotten the shots and stopped protecting themselves, it caused and gonna cause some issues. Both of July's, you know, right on our heels. And so please put your mask on, be careful where you hang out. And if you don't have the shots, listen, you need to get the shots. I got the shots. I'm asking our membership to get those shots. And some people got those ideas about it, but listen, we need to try to preclude this thing and get it done. It's going to take an effort that is, I mean, a concert effort. Everybody's got to be involved. All right, God bless your hearts real good. And that's what our position is as Christians. We are to, our kingdom, we are kingdom folks, and we are to impact this world. We can't impact them. If we throwing balls in the gutters, they'll never impact them pins. But we need to start getting that thing on the lane and uh, let that thing hit and impact those pins to get a strike. Not to knock out folks, but to get people brought in. And you have to be salt to saints. I want you to be careful and be aware of that. Our kingdom responsibility is to impact this crazy world that God sent his son in to die for. 
Amen. Well, be blessed this week. Whatever you do, make sure you put God first. Keep on praying for our ministry. We're on that kingdom thing God is trying to get us, and hopefully next week we can talk about the conduct and character of a kingdom person. And uh, please be, be prayerful. And I will say this to those that are struggling in and, and our membership and our friends who have come alongside of us, make sure you keep in mind that you're not alone. And we are with you. We are all in this together. And don't be so concerned about all of this craziness going on. God has made you salt and light. Go into the world and make a difference. Let us receive the benediction today. Father, we thank you and we love you and we honor you. And we thank you, God, that you have allowed your kingdom to come to us, that we will impact this, your world. And your name will be glorified forever. We ask, God, your blessings upon those who lost their lives there in Miami with that uh, catastrophic event, Father. And we know there have been so much, been so much devastation. But, Lord, we are not, we are not moved. We're going to stand still and see the salvation of you, O God. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and now forevermore. Sing with me. Amen. 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 God bless you. Man, I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Be blessed this week and be a blessing to somebody else. Let your salt shake and your light shine.